live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco. We're live for IBM Think 2019. The Cube's exclusive coverage. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Our next two guests are the cloud gurus at IBM and VMware. AJ Patel, Senior Vice President, General Manager, Cloud Provider Software Business Unit. Good to see you again. To see and Arish Krama, General Manager of IBM Cloud. Guys, thanks for spending the time. You guys are the cloud gurus here to, to share with us having us. what's going thanks on. Thanks for having us. Uh, privilege. Obviously, cloud has been around. We've seen the public cloud momentum. Hybrid, certainly been around for a while. Multi-cloud's a big conversation people are having. Role of data and that is super important, AI anywhere, you guys at IBM have mm -hmm. announced. You guys have been on this it's hybrid, on, journey, or a hybrid while. journey for a while, right. on premise, yep. AWS on VMware, all this good stuff's happening, this, the, customers, the customers want this. Yep. So I talk about the relationship you guys have with IBM. You know, the, the broader VMware, IBM relationship over nine, 10 years old. Uh, I had the privilege of being part of the cloud the last couple of years. The momentum is amazing, over 1,700 plus customers, and these are enterprise customers, not your you know, one node trial customers. These are real mission critical enterprise customers using this at, at, at scale. And the number one thing we hear from customers is, make it easy for me to leverage cloud. Right? Operate in a world where I'm using my on-prem and my public cloud assets. Make it seamless, and this is really what we've talked about a lot, right? How do we provide that ubiquitous digital platform for them to operate in this hybrid world? And we're privileged to have IBM as a great partner in this journey. All right, so talk about the IBM cloud. Ginny Romani said on CNBC this morning, we saw the interview with my friend John Ford over there. She said, AI anywhere means you can run on any cloud, Watson, with containers, that's cloud DNA. You sit in the mm -hmm. cloud with Kubernetes and containers, it's changing the game. Now you can run a lot of things everywhere. This is what customers want end to end, from on-premise to wherever. How has that changed the IBM cloud um, posture, its products, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit of that? Yeah, absolutely, so look, I mean, people have their data in different places, and as you know, it's really expensive to move stuff around, uh, you got to make sure it's safe, etc. So, we want to take our applications and run them against the data wherever they are, right? And when you think about today's landscape in the uh, cloud industry, I think it's a perfect storm, a good perfect storm in that, uh, Containers and Kubernetes, uh, you know, everyone's rallying around it, the ecosystem, the consumers, the providers, uh, and it just makes us easy for us to take that capability and really uh, make it available on multi-clouds, and that's what we're doing. Talk about your joint customers, because the VMware has a lot of IT operators running, been running virtual machines for a long time. You guys have been big supporters of that, and, and open source. That really grew that whole IT generation that we're seeing with cloud. Mm -hmm. Talk about your customers, your momentum, how you guys are, just ballpark, how many customers you guys have together, yeah. and what are some of the things that they're doing? Right, so you know, this is a really interesting story. I was actually uh, away from IBM for just over two years, but one of the last things I did uh, when I was in IBM the first time around was actually start this uh, VMware partnership and seated the team that did it. So uh, coming back, it's really interesting to see the uptake it's had. Uh, you know, we've got like 1,700 customers over together, 700, yes. over 1,700 customers yeah. together. We've moved tens of thousands of VM uh, workloads, and as Ajay said, we've done it in a mission critical fashion across multiple zones, across multiple regions. Uh, and now, you know, we want to take it to the next level. We want to make sure that these people that have moved their basic infrastructure and their mission critical infrastructure across to public cloud can extend those applications by leveraging the cloud native applications that we have on our cloud, plus we want to make it uh, possible for them to you know, move their uh, uh, workloads to other parts of uh, the IBM ecosystem in terms of our AI capability. I think one of the things we found was uh, the notion of modernize your infrastructure first, lift and then transform, is starting to materialize. And we used to talk about this as really the way, the best way to use cloud or use hybrid cloud was start by just uplifting your infrastructure. And whether it's Westpac, you asked for some customers, right? Westpac's a great example. I think they're talk we're talking about it uh, in the Harish and I joint uh, presentation tomorrow. Or you look at you know, Kaiser, who's going to be on, on stage tomorrow. We're seeing industries across the board are saying, you know, I have a lot of complexity. Sitting on aging hardware, older versions of infrastructure software. How do I modernize the platform first, lift and shift it to leverage the cloud, and then I can transform my application. 
using more and more portable services. Like, so Kubernetes has to provide us kind of that infrastructure portability, but what about my data, right? What about if I can run my application with the data? So I think we're starting to see the maturing of the use of cloud based on workloads and leveraging the assets we yeah. have. Yeah, AJ, wonder if you, we can dig a level deeper on that, because you know, I think back to you know, 15 years or so ago, right. it was VMware allowed me to not have to worry about my infrastructure, my you know, OS and my uh, you know, server that I was running yep. on might be going end of life. Yep. Well, let me shove it in a VM and then I can extend the life and then I can manage yep. how that happens. So, of course, the critique I would have is, oh, maybe it's time to update that, that application anyway. So right. I, I like the message that you're saying about, okay, let me get a, to a process where I, I'm a little bit freer yep. of where, yep. um, and then I can do the hard work of yep. updating that data, updating that application. Uh, uh, you know, help us understand yeah, how so that it's, happens. It's no longer about just unlocking the compute, right, yeah. which was virtualizing the server. It's what about my network? And we talked about earlier, do I need a software-defined network? Well, the reality is everything is going programmable. If you want a programmable infrastructure, it's compute, network, storage, all software-defined. So the building block for us is a software-defined data center running on the infrastructure that IBM provides. 60 plus data centers, bare metal at scale, elastic, right. and then layering that with ICP, IBM Cloud Private, whether it's hosted or on-prem on, on vSphere, gives you that full stack, that Nirvana that people are talking about, a supportable stack yeah. that Harish can talk about. Right, and, and adding to what he said, right, uh, you said you know, it's not about just moving your old stuff to the, to the uh, cloud. Absolutely. So, as I said in uh, one of the earlier conversations that we have, uh, we had, is we have a whole wealth of new services, whether it's blockchain or IoT, or the AI the, that you, yep. you spoke about leveraging those capabilities to further extend your app and give it a new lease of life to provide new uh, insights is what it's all about. Well, well that, that, that's great because, right, it, it's one thing to just say, okay, I get it there, can I get better utilization, is it to change my pricing, but it's those services, and that's right. kind of the promise of the cloud is, you know, if I built something in my environment, that's great, and I can update it, and I can get updates, but if I put it in your environment, you can help manage some of those things, as well as I should have access to all of these services. IBM's got a broad ecosystem. Can you give us, you know, what, what are some of the low-hanging fruit is to people when they get there, that they're unlocking data, that they're using things like AI. Uh, what, what are some of the most prevalent uh, services that people are uh, adding when they go to the IBM Clouds? So when you look at people who first move their workloads to the cloud, typically they tend to dip their toe in the water. They, they take what's running on-prem, they use the IaaS capabilities in the cloud and start to move it there. But the real innovation really starts to happen further up the uh, stack, so to speak, the uh, platform as a service, uh, things like AI, IoT, blockchain, all the things that I mentioned. Uh, so a very natural uh, next movement is to start to modernize those applications and add to it capabilities that it could never have before because you know, it was built in a monolith and it was on-prem and it was kind of stuck there. So now the, the composition that the cloud gives you with all of these rich services where innovation happens first uh, that is the real benefit to our customers. Harish, you said you took a little hiatus from IBM and went out outside IBM. Where mm -hmm. did you go and what did you learn? Were you at, I think it was at Goldman, Jack, JP Morgan, where were you? So uh, it, it was a large bank, you yeah. know, <laughs> I'm uh, not, not allowed to say the name of the bank. Uh, <laughs> One of those two. It, it was a large bank uh, and it was in the US, so that narrows down the field somewhat. What was it like to go outside, uh, now come inside, you see DevOps full, you know, cutting edge, bank, now you got IBM Cloud. You feel good about where things are? Yeah, you know, if you look at what a lot of these banks are trying to do, they start to attack the cloud journey, saying we're going to take everything that ran in the bank for years and years and years, and we're going to you know, make them microservices and put them all on public cloud. And that's when you really hit the 80, 20% problem because you've got large monoliths that don't lend themselves to be refactored and, and moved out to a public cloud. So, uh, you know, again, enter Kubernetes and containers, et cetera. These allow you a way to modernize your applications where you can either deploy those containerized, you know, pay-as-you-go type models on-prem or on public. And if you have a rich enough set of services, both on-prem and on the public cloud, you can pretty much decide how much of it runs on-prem versus how much of it runs choice. on the cloud. It's, it's a deployment, deployment choice. choice. So a late binding deployment so choice. So basically what you're saying yeah. is, let's see if I get this right, I want to get your yeah. reaction to this. You don't have to kill the old to bring in the new. Correct. With containers and Kubernetes and now service meshes around the corner, yeah. you can bring in new workloads, take advantage of the cutting edge technology, and manage your life cycle of the workloads on the old side, or it's just 
can play along. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think what we're finding is, you know, we moved from hybrid being a destination to an operating model. And it's no longer about doing this at scale. Like, am I multi-cloud? Any given application is tied to a cloud or a destination. It's a late binding decision. Yeah. But as an aggregate, I may be using multiple clouds. Yeah. Right? So that more model we're moving to is really about allowing developers to be workload centric and services centric to see where do I want to run an application. Okay, one of the challenges with multi-cloud is there's skill sets I need to worry Absolutely. about and it can be complex. Um, I want to touch on three points and I'd love to get both yeah. of your viewpoints. Networking, security, and management. Yep. How, how do we help tackle that and make that simpler like for first, customers? Like first, yeah. yeah, sure, so you know, uh, I think when you think about clouds, uh, yeah, public clouds especially, it's beyond your data center and the mindset out there is if it's beyond my data center, it can be safe. But uh, when you start to build those constructs in the modern era, you really do take care of a lot of things that perhaps your on-prem pieces did not take into consideration when they were built like many uh, decades ago, right? So yeah. with uh, the IBM Public Cloud, for example, uh, you know, security is at the heart of it. Yep. Uh, we have a leadership position there. One of the things that we've announced is uh, key, protect, uh, yep. key protect for not only VMware workloads, vSAN, vSphere, et cetera, but also for other applications making use of our public cloud services. Uh, then when you talk about our Z, you know, we have a hardware as a security a module, which is FIPS 140 level two, or dash two level four, which nobody else in the industry has. So when you put your key in there, only the customer can take it out. Not even us as cloud service providers can touch it. It will basically disintegrate, you know, so to speak. AJ, talk about VMware's customer base inside the IBM ecosystem. Yep. What's new, what should they pay attention to as you guys yep. continue the momentum? So I think if you look at the, the last two years, it's been around what we call these larger enterprise dedicated clouds. The exciting thing in the horizon is we're adding a multi-tenant IaaS on top of this VMware dedicated. So being able to provide that breadth of you know, access thing, whether it's dedicated, multi-tenant, public cloud, IaaS, fully programmable, allows us to go down market. So I expect the customer count to go up, being able to kind of consume it on a pay-as-you-go basis, leveraging kind of multi-tenant with dedicated, whether it's highly secure or for dev tests or other use cases kind of, we're going to see a much, much larger set of use cases that I'm most excited about. So the bottom line, I, bottom line, I'm the customer, bottom line, what's in it for me? What, what do I yeah, get? Yeah, for the customer, it's with the safest choice, right? It's the mission critical secure cloud. You can now run the same application on-prem in a dedicated environment in public cloud on IBM or in a multi-tenant world. And on you the can cloud, mix and match. On right? the cloud side, I can take advantage of all the things you have, and can I take advantage of that Watson AI thing that Rob Thomas has been talking about? All oh that yeah, good absolutely. Stuff? And again, you know, Modernize, the way yep. that we've built ICP for D, which is IBM Cloud Private for Data, uh, the, you know, it's all containerized, it's orchestrated by Kube, so you can not only build it, you can either run it on-prem, you can run it on our public cloud, or you can run it on other people's public clouds as well. Irish, for customers, that are, for people that are looking at IBM Cloud and reevaluating you guys now again, say, or, or for the first time, what should they look at? Cloud private, what key thing would you point someone to look at IBM if they so, were going to inspect your cloud offering? So again, it, it's back to my story in the bank, right? It's, uh, you can't do everything in the public cloud, right? Uh, there are just certain things that need to remain on-prem. Uh, and will be so for the foreseeable future. So uh, when you take a look at our hybrid story, the fact that it is, has a consistent base on which it is built, uh, and it is a industry standard open source base, uh, you know, you build your application to suit the needs of an application, right? Is it low latency, put it on prem. Do you need some cloud native services, put it on the public cloud. Do you need to be near your data that lives on somebody else's cloud, go put it on their cloud. Right, so it really is not a one size fits all, it's whatever your business needs. Meet the needs. customer where he is, right? Yeah. That's often so a basically thing, right? flexibility choice. Absolutely. Flexibility and choice. You're the store yeah. for all things cloud. Yes. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, uh, last thing I want to ask is, uh, where, where do developers fit into the, this joint solution? Yeah, so, so I think the, the biggest thing is that that's trying to change for us is making these services available in a portable manner. When do I quote unquote lock into the public cloud service, particularly data, and unlocking that from the infrastructure is probably a key trend. So for us, it's about staying true to Kubernetes and upstream with the distribution, so it's portable, providing more and more services and making it easy for them to access a catalog of services on a pay-go manner, but then making it operationally viable so when you deploy it, you can support the day two operations that are needed. So mm -hmm. it's that full life cycle with developers not having to worry about the heavy burden 
are running and operating is what we see. Exactly, you know, it's all about the developers. As you well know in the cloud world, the developer is the operator. That's right. So as long as you can give him or her tools. the right set of tools to do CI, CD, DevOps, uh, and get things out there in a consistent fashion, whether it is on-prem or a public cloud, I think it's a win for all. That's exactly the trend we're seeing. IT operations moving to more developers and more big time operational scale yep. questions yep. where you're programming the infrastructure. Absolutely. Enabling exactly. developers who don't want to deal with it. Yep. And making it workload centric so you know when to deploy what workload and having yep. the full control as part of your app deployment. Exactly. All right, final question. I know we got a break, we're in tight on time. Final point, share a uh, perspective of what's, what's important here happening at IBM Think 2019. If people who didn't make it here in San Francisco are watching, either the two top cloud executives on VMware and IBM here, as you bias towards cloud, of course, but you know, if you're watching, what's the most important story happening this week? What's, what's going on with IBM Think? Why is this conference this week important? I think for us, it's basically saying, we're here to meet you where you are, regardless where you're in your customer journey. It's all about choice. It's no longer only about public cloud. And you now have a lot of capability at your fingertips to take your legacy workloads or your net new workloads. So any app, anywhere, we can help you on that journey. That would be the key takeaway from here. Yeah, and I would echo that, right? Said it uh, slightly differently, uh, you know, a lot of the public service uh, or public cloud service providers kind of bring you over to their public cloud and then you're kind of stuck over there. And customers don't like that. I mean, you look at the statistics, uh, everybody has at least two or more public clouds. They're worried about the connectivity, the interoperability, the security. Cost. Uh, the cost, the yeah. skills to manage all of it. And I think uh, we have the perfect set of solutions that really start to uh, speak to that problem. So the world's getting more complex as, as more functionalities here. Software's going to abstract it away. Developers need clean environment to work in. Programmable infrastructure. And choice. VMware and IBM <laughs> safe choice. Choice, choice, choice. <laughs> we have VMware two, and IBM. Top two cloud executives here inside the Cube from IBM and VM. We're bringing all the coverage. It's the Cube here in the lobby of Moscone North on Howard Street in San Francisco for IBM Think 2019. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break. Thank you, John, it's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.